breaking down the 2016 vice presidential election result and what it could possibly mean for the 2022 presidential election. So this is the final result. Disclaimer, I'm not saying I'm an expert in this. Political analyst yarn. This is just going to be a comprehensive educated opinion of mine discussing all about likelihoods. You can freely disagree with this. You can scroll up. And of course, I acknowledge that people can be multidimensional and how people arrive at the decision in terms of votes could vary, could factor in different things, and it could change over time. Now back to the content. The winner is Vice President Lenny Robredo. If your opinion disagrees with this, na karon nandayaan, na mali talaga yung result, then you have to be comfortable with the burden of your opinion. You disagree with the unanimous decision of the Supreme Court, and you'd rather believe people in TikTok, YouTube, and the candidate himself, Bongbong, who has the interest to tell us otherwise. Okay na? It's safe to say that we have 14.4 million votes for Lenny Robredo this time for the presidential election. Parang mahirap namang isipin na itong mga bumoto na to ay biglang magbabago, mag-iiba ng isip. Most likely, they're still going to vote for Lenny Robredo because Lenny really did an excellent job on being a VP for the past six years. Now, I'm not sure if it's the same case for Momo Marcos because these 14.1 million votes, marami na nagkaroon ng switch to Lenny because of their realization that they were fed into by fake news sa social media. And marami na tayong manayitang narratives, even celebrities themselves, who have declared support to VP Lenny already. So it's safe to say that there's an increase for votes for VP Lenny. If you voted for Trillanes, of course, most likely, that's going to be an additional vote for VP Lenny now in 2022 election. Of course, tropang angat siya. Now, for Alan Cayetano's 5.9 million votes, this is quite complex. Remember the VP debates na ginisa niya si Bombo Marcos? Kasi he's a solid Marcos critic. But I understand that part of these votes for Alan Cayetano is because of him being in tandem with Duterte. So, how would that work na ang VP ni Bombo Marcos is a Duterte? So, yun. But know that if you voted for Alan Peter Cayetano, he is a strong Marcos critic. How he made compromises over the years, how his mental gymnastics explains his actions and inaction nowadays, it's up for you to decide. For Cheese Escudero's 4.9 million votes, hindi ako sure kung saan mapupunta tong boto na to, but do know that Cheese Escudero nowadays is having an unclear stance on Bombo Marcos. Maybe that's his politics talking, so we're just not sure kung saan mapupunta to. So there's no one clear and compassing conclusion for this. A lot of things has changed over time, but what I do understand is it's not as simple as it looks like na mag add ad ka lang ng mga votes. You can do the math on this, but that's an over simplification. Kasi of course, this is not the same numbers of voters back in 2016. There's a spike of voter registration especially coming from the youth. Now, we can be totally optimistic about this, that this spike in new registered voters are people na masyadong galit na sa nangyari sa True Duterte administration and how lumping together Sara Duterte and Bomo Marcos is going to be their impetus to vote for Lenny Robredo, to vote for Gobierno Tapat. But there's data saying that the spike in voters registration are coming from the youth. And unfortunately, the youth youth are the target of Bombo Marcos sa kanilang black propaganda machinery, especially in TikTok. That's the reason why TikTok is flourishing and that's why we're pushing back against TikTok. Youth voters were the target of the propaganda machinery. So we have to factor in kung ilan dito sa mga newly registered voters, sa mga Cayetano, Escudero voters ay naging biktima ng propaganda machinery for the past six years and therefore they're switching to Bombo Marcos. But of course, napakahirap naman i-quantify kung ilan dito yung mga natauhan at nag-switch to Lenny Robredo, especially from the voters coming from the Bombo Marcos camp to 2016. Maraming taong nagising. But in conclusion, as a kakampink, as an optimist, what are we holding on to? One, VP Lobredo did an excellent job as a vice president for the past six years. People can see that. And that's a solid reason to vote for her as president. But more so, the 2022 election season is quite different because dito lumabas ang people's campaign. What has been happening now na hindi nangyari before is the people's campaign provided the funds, the volunteerism na kailangan ni Lenny Robredo to win this campaign. We've seen sorties after sorties na jam-packed at ang daming tao. There's a strong house-to-house -house nationwide effort and massive celebrity endorsements. And some of these celebrities were former DDS. Sabi ko sinabi, dami ko da, respect my onion. But the most accurate survey, the most comprehensive data that we can interpret is the result of election day. And that's why I pray that we may have a clean and honest election.